Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. In our last session, we were in Acts chapter 16, and we saw how Paul cast an evil spirit out of a girl and kind of made a problem for himself because the owners of this girl who was practicing the witchcraft occult uh, were making good money on her. And now she becomes a Christian, and uh, Paul gets himself in a lot of hot water. And we find out that he and his uh, partner Silas were beaten with rods, and then they were cast into prison. But they weren't just thrown into a cell. They were thrown into the middle innermost prison, which in reality was a septic tank for all of the rest of the prison. They were put in stocks there, and uh, so they couldn't get out. And the reason they were put there was so that they would basically die overnight. And they wouldn't have to have a trial for him in the next day. And wouldn't have to execute him. He had a bloody back and was beaten raw and of course you can only imagine what sitting in two or three feet of excrement in a septic tank would do almost instantly to infect you and kill you quickly. So we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 16 verse 25. But about midnight Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. This is probably the greatest decision that Paul made in his ministry career as a Christian preacher and church planter. Now, uh, we ask, well, why would that be? Because in all reality, he knew he was put there to die. And he knew that this was it. And most of us, having been put in such a precarious situation after being beaten and bloodied by these people in the town square, uh, we would have probably said, okay, this is it. I'm coming home. Lord Jesus, take me now. Or as the old joke goes, beam me up, God. I'm ready to go. And uh, he didn't make that choice. He chose, instead of getting angry or instead of just giving up, he and Silas chose to do what? They chose to pray and to sing praises to God in the midst of this septic tank of all places why would you you just give up and die you'll be in heaven in a few hours he chose the right thing and he endured until the end and obviously this was not the end we'll pick up there in verse 26 and suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. This was the jailer's nightmare because a jailer had a job in the Roman Empire and was paid very good money. But if any of his prisoners ever escaped, he was put to death, especially capital prisoners. In other words, people who had committed grievous crimes. And obviously there was a whole prison full of them. They're all free, basically. Their chains have fell off. They're standing there looking at each other like, what are we doing here? And they're getting ready to get out of there. Verse 27. And when the jailer had been roused out of sleep and had seen the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. He knew if he didn't kill himself, uh, he would be killed in the morning. And so he's going to do it his way, on his terms, uh, because he knows he's done. He's, he, it's all over. Verse 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice, saying, Do not harm, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, trembling with fear, and fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? This was a great act of God, which followed a great choice by Paul and Silas to press on, to sing praise, regardless of their circumstances. God rewarded it, and even Paul was able to keep the prisoners in the prison. That's a miracle of God, if you really think about that. And it all brought this jailer, this Philippian jailer, to his knees, wanting to serve the same Christ that Paul and Silas obviously were loyal to, faithful to, and loved with all their heart. Verse 31, And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, and you and your household. 
And they spoke the word of the Lord to him together with all who were in his house. And he took them that very hour uh, of the night and washed their wounds. And immediately he was baptized, he and all his household. And he brought them into his house and set food before them and rejoiced greatly, having believed in God with his whole household. Now, as a very, there's a lot of things that wrap into these few verses, but the key things we see is a man who was a jailer saw the power of God in Paul and Silas and their choices and their activities, and then what happened, they were able to, by the grace of God, keep all the prisoners there, and thus he did not lose his life, and he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Not only that, but his whole household. And that word household there is an interesting word in the Greek. Because it refers to a wife and children of all ages. Okay, several different ages. Could have been from infancy to young adulthood. We don't know. But we do know that his entire house believed with him. And they, his entire household, was baptized. So it's an interesting thought to think about all of that going on just because Paul and Silas made a choice not to get down in the dumpers and not to give up and not to say, well, this is where it's got me. I guess this is where I have to go. This is the end. They chose not to make it the end by praising God and singing and lifting up their prayers to God. And God heard them and honored the choice they made. Now, what would we do in a situation like this? Well, most of us would give up. Most of us would probably throw in the towel and say, take me home, Jesus. But we must press on until God's time for us is ready. And sometimes what we think the end is, isn't. I think we can apply that a lot to our day and age. Living in the nation we're living in, we have to press on. We have to make choices to praise God regardless of how bad it looks. And we should. We need to take that with us from this lesson today. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for your word. Thank you for the power of your word. May it just blossom inside of us as we are confronted with life's problems to choose you and the power of your love and your grace and your mercy. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.